Welcome to the Chairman's Perspective Podcast. Chairman, 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 Chairman. You are listening to the Chairman's Perspective. I am your host, Van Turner Jr., and I'm here with my co-host, DC. What's up, Mr. Chairman? We have another great show planned for you today. One of my colleagues is here, none other than Commissioner Dr. Edmund Ford Jr. We'll be visiting the Chairman's Perspective, so hold on tight. I'm here again with D.C. Yes, sir. And we are powered by the Kazukian Network, and we'll be right to you. The Chairman's Perspective on the Kazukian Network. Kazukian! Keeping it real, right, and funky. Is this an opportunity that we can seize and express interest from the governor and the state to act on the behalf of young people in Shep County? There are stories that we don't want to tell because they will piss some folks off, make some folks mad. Funky politics on the Kazukian Network. Kazukian! The chairman's perspective on the Kazukian Network. We're back, we're back, we're back with the Chairman's Perspective, powered by the Kazuki Network. I am DC sitting here along with the host of the Chairman's Perspective, one and only Van Turner Jr. Mr. Chairman, we've got what? We've got the Commissioner. Doctor. The Doctor Commissioner. We ain't got many <laughs> Doctor Commissioners, do we? <laughs> no, sir. Yeah, one uh, out of District 9, the one and only Dr. Edmund Ford Jr. Welcome to the program, sir. How are you? This is my first time here, so hopefully everything is good. <laughs> I, I like got the way my chairman he, I to like my the way right. He said that. I got my chairman to my right, so you got chairman to your right, and you might have somebody out there waiting that's going to take care of me if I come out wrong. That's I all right. I can deal with them too. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. I know you want to jump in on this thing. So, here. so Commissioner Dr. Yes, Edmund Ford Jr. Van you know, D. Turner Jr. Esquire. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Don't y'all be calling each other names. Up here. <laughs> you are one of the newest additions to the County Board of Commissioners. Uh, do you see much of a difference with your relationship to service uh, now that you're on the county side from when you were on the city side? Well, look, first of all, thank you for having me on the chairman's perspective. I don't even consider myself new because how long have you known me, Van? Mm. Man, we're it ain't going been that back, long now. Uh, we're going back at least a decade. <laughs> wow. At least. And how many times I've been, have I been over there at 160 North Main checking y'all out? Oh, to see what y'all have been, been doing. been over there a lot of times. Right. And now I'm over there. I got a whole office and everything. That's I right. I got a lot of stuff on my wall, too. Yeah, you sure do. Wow. You need to go visit his office one day. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I walk by there. I'm like, who's in there? I'm almost out of space. I know. It's a museum <laughs> in that thing, man. <laughs> but wow. um, look, it's good uh, working with uh, the county commissioners now, but uh, I'm glad that uh, the chairman actually has a good thing going on where we're actually meeting monthly with uh, city council members oh, wow. as well. And uh, not to get into policy, but um, last yesterday and um, last month, we've been able to work on some joint ventures. And I sincerely look to look forward to next month where we're going to be working on some other things as well. That's amazing. Though. I mean, That's how many times has that been employed, uh, Mr. Chairman, in terms it's, of it's, uh, it's new. From history? I've, I've never heard of it being done before. And uh, we had a joint session with the Shelby County School Board. We did. So it's it it's we rolling, man. So you tell me it just took some young cats like y'all to come up with this idea and say, Hey, hey y'all, let's have a meeting together. Well, I think so. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh man. Where have we been all our lives here in Memphis and Shelby County? Anyway, Commissioner Ford. Yes, sir. You come from a long, 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 long extra long line. You calling my folks old. No, I'm not I'm, oh, I'm just saying that your check. folks were back <laughs> your folks were running Memphis and Shelby County when Memphis and Shelby County almost was founded. But man, you come from tall timber. Tell us something about you in terms of public service. And and this is the dumbest question in the world to be asking you, but there how did you no fall into public how did you I, but how did you fall into public service and has this been something that you've you've dreamt of doing all your life? Well look, if you asked me when I was an undergrad would I be in public office, I had no interest hmm. at all. So I went to T S U in nineteen ninety six. That was a gentleman. In fact, um <laughs> I have to give him a little shout out. His name is Trey Johnson. He's uh, the brother of Allison Fouché, who works for the oh, city. Wow. Yeah. And he and I went to uh, TSU together. And he told me while we were playing, I think, NBA Live 95 or something. He said, that you are going to go back to, didn't I say, don't be calling people I'm, old. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Bye-bye. <laughs> you calling me old, man. What's up with that? <laughs> As I was trying to say, say sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we were we were playing either NBA Live or Madden 95 or something like that. He said that I was going to go back and run for office. And I looked at him like, you've lost your mind. There's wow. no way I would go back and get into this 
stuff because cesspool. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, yeah. look, politics is a combat sport, yeah. and it's made for some folks, and it's not made for some folks. And I have to tell him he was absolutely right. So I didn't get the interest until I decided I wanted to move back from Nashville to Memphis, and I still have the truck today that I drove down. I-40 West and 40 East. It has 300,000 miles. Get out of here. It's at the funeral home now. I mean, we transport uh, flowers for the formerly living in it now, but wow. that's the truck that I used to drive back and forth from Nashville to Memphis and Memphis back. I had a good principal back then uh, when I was teaching at Hillwood High School. Yeah. And he gave me a heads up on what, I might have expected, but he also gave me his blessing as well. He said, every other Tuesday, if you got to drive down there, learn, come back, teach a class. And mm. I did that for three years. Wow. That's why I got 300,000 miles on my car. You're listening to the chairman's perspective, powered by the Kazuki Network, and, we, and we're being preached to. We've been, the word is being departed to us, Mr. Chairman, by the one and only Dr. Ford. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so, Dr. Ford, yes, Commissioner sir. Ford. You, you represent those titles again. There you yes, go. sir. You <laughs> represent District 9. I do. Now, describe for our listeners exactly what is District 9. Give us the makeup of the area. Uh, the, 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 what's the beat of District 9? What's the, mm. the tenor and the tone? What's happening in District 9? Let our listeners know uh, about the district you represent. Well, look, you talked about beat. They got a great heartbeat. That heartbeat is so strong. Those folks vote in the largest capacity in every election that I've seen. Yes, sir. You can go back and look at the last year's election. You can go back and look at 2007, 2011, 2015. The people of 38109 and the people of 38116 go out and vote. They take it very seriously, and you would not see less than 40% of the electorate mm. uh, come out. You would see more than 40%. In fact, I remember there was an article in, it was either the Daily Memphian or the Commercial Appeal, and they had all of our districts, 1 through 13, uh -huh. and it talked about the number of people that came out and voted. So guess who had the most? Mm. Whitehaven. District 9, yes, District exactly. Nine. In fact, it was a big old spike. I don't know if it was necessarily me or if it was those uh, six other folks that were in the race no or if it no was idea. just historically my district comes out and they vote. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I tell folks, please, please come out and vote. I mean, if you don't go out and vote and you start complaining, I don't start really listening because my thing is you could have went out and voted. And, and at, at the same time, um, I tell folks, look, and this is all, we're all grown folks here. I tell them the day that they don't want me, I will go to the funeral home at 3390 Elvis Presley Boulevard. And I would go work with my old man because, look, at the end of the day, last time I checked, the people at the funeral home don't talk back. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> they don't person. talk back. No, they, they no, don't. I heard they don't say much back to anybody now. Yeah. No, sir. Now, now, now the character, yes, the character of nine. I mean, you've got some iconic places. You've got Graceland in your, in your district, right? You've got uh, the world-renowned Whitehaven High School. Yes, sir. I don't, I don't, I don't, there's a couple of people. World-renowned world the, the, Whitehaven High School. They typically school. have young are people. Are we still that on that? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That young people are graduating with all of these millions of dollars in scholarships. They are. And and it's, and, and, and Westwood, with Westwood High School. This is a storied community, man. Yeah. Yeah, we have several neighborhoods. J.L. Net is down there at, at, uh, Mount, at Vernon. Mount Vernon yeah. down there. Yes, you sir. got a young brother there, too, now, Mel oh, yeah. Watkins. Oh, Mel, Mel yeah, Watkins. That's yeah, right, Dr. Yeah. Watkins. I went to school with his wife, Lowy, Lady Lowy. Uh, they do a great job. Uh, they do. Over there in Westwood. You know, and we got a lot of uh, neighborhoods. We got Westwood, West Junction, Walker Homes. And we got about Walker uh, Homes. Yeah, That's right. That's right. I'm going to tell them you did if you. No, no, no. Okay. No, we, no, we, do they call it Ford Homes? They call it Ford Homes or is that still Walker Homes? I'm just confused now. Look, I'm calling it West Junction <laughs> Walker Homes because when they have their neighborhood association meetings, that's how they want to be addressed. Yes, sir. We're going to address them so correctly. You got um, several other neighborhoods. You got Indian Hills. You got uh, Graves Manor. Some folks yeah. may call it PV, but I ain't gonna say what PV is. On <laughs> no, no, yes. no, 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 don't do that. This, this, why you, why you scratching your Why you scratching your neck, Chairman? This, this, this is a holy show here, H O L Y. <laughs> right. <laughs> Look, you got a lot of great neighborhoods, yeah. and if I missed any neighborhoods, it's not because uh, I I know the other neighborhoods, but I saw that the chairman was. Uh, hit, hit his watch over there. His watch, we'll, we'll so, be, yes. hey, look, Commissioner, we'll be right back. Let's take a quick break right here on the Chairman's Perspective, powered by the Kazuki Network. Is that all right with you, Mr. Chairman? That's okay. Here we go. The Chairman's Perspective on the Kazuki Network. Jazz, America's own original musical art form. When did it start? Who were and are some of the major players? 
How do you distinguish what kind of jazz you're listening to? We talk about the great and lesser known artists, songs and tunes, the instruments and the social impact jazz has had on world culture since its beginning at the start of the 20th century. Riffin on jazz on the Kazookian Network. Hello, this is Sheriff Floyd Bonner, Sheriff of Shelby County, and you're listening to The Chairman's Perspective, powered by the Kazookian Network. We are back with The Chairman's Perspective. I'm sitting here in the pilot seat along with my co-host, D.C. Yes, sir. And our guest today is none other than Commissioner Edmund Ford, Jr. And we've just talked about his role as a Shelby County Commissioner for the historic Whitehaven community. We're now going to get into what Commissioner Ford is doing now. He's undertaking a new uh, task, working with the library system, right. teaching financial literacy. Tell us a, li- a little bit about what you're doing in that space. Well, I'm glad you asked that because not many people have asked about what's really going on. And uh, I'm glad that the chairman's perspective has given me an opportunity to talk about it because other outlets have not given me the fair opportunity to talk about it. They just look wow. at now, I mean, it's unfortunate. I had to go on a couple of other shows just to talk about what I'm doing. And when I tell you about it, I know people are going to be like, when's the next uh, session? So just to give you an idea. So I became the senior financial literacy coordinator officially with the city of Memphis under Mayor Jim Strickland and the uh, Memphis Public Libraries on November the 26th. Mm-hmm. And in that role, I've been able to create something called the 90 day curriculum to financial literacy. And it consists of five parts. And I'll go ahead and elaborate on those parts real quick. So the first part is learning about credit, credit repair, and increasing your credit score. Memphis has an average of 609 on their credit scores, which is in the bottom 2%. Oh, Lord. And many of the reasons are people were misinformed, uninformed, or ill-informed about credit. I mean, you're not necessarily learning about it in school, unfortunately, and I tell people, even though you have to have a personal finance class, the seniors do in order to graduate, they're not talking about credit. They're only talking about some of the historical aspects, but they're not telling you what you need to know in real life. That's so that's number one. So I'm showing folks how to bring their credit scores up. I'm showing folks how to restore their credit. I'm showing people what their rights are as consumers so that they can know that, hey, if it's not true in your credit, I'm showing you how to fix it. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a session tomorrow where I'm talking about that at the Cornelia Crenshaw Library from 11 to 2. I'll be there and I'll be talking about that personally. So that's one of the parts that I do. Uh, The second part is purchasing your first home through the NACA program. And the NACA program is the Neighborhood Assistance Corporation of America. And what happened was, remember, about 10 years ago, there was a housing Mm -hmm. bubble that burst and there were a lot of predatory loans. Well, this organization is one I fully support. They come in and they let that person know who's renting for eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars a month. They could be homeowners for five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred dollars a month. Mm-hmm. And when you have home ownership, yeah, not only are you putting uh, houses on the tax roll, that's the political answer, but you're actually letting folks know, hey, you're putting in money on something that you're actually going to own at the end of the day that's and right. not something that you'll never own. So we got some great people coming in tomorrow. They're going to discuss uh, the NACA program. And just to give a few highlights, it's no money down, no closing costs, no PMI. You just have to join. You have to make sure that you can put a budget together. They give you a four-hour session that you have to go through in order to make sure that you know how to put a budget together. So so you're educating people, basically. Yeah, so even though I'm not in the classroom anymore, I'm still educating. It's a classroom life, right? Exactly, yes. So the third part deals with finding scholarship money for college. So five years ago when I was watching an episode of Shark Tank, Christopher Gray, who invented the app called Scholly, was able to um, come to Memphis, and we were able to raise enough money to where now we work with the nonprofit school seed. What we have done is for any senior that has the desire and will to go to college, We have been able to give them free access to millions and millions of dollars of scholarships. And in fact, last month, we hit over 800 seniors getting at least access to $11 million worth of scholarships. That's not the stuff you'll see on the news, but that's what's going on right now. 
and I and many of those people came from Whitehaven. In fact, the person that got the most scholarship money came from Booker D. Washington High School. Praise mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. BTW. And they'd like to say nothing good comes out of out of the hood. Nothing good oh, comes it out of three one two six. It it does. And you should see many of the people that um have received access to uh the, that scholarship money. Uh part four is investing in the stock market and creating generational wealth. Yeah. Being in the stock market is not just for folks who may not look like us. It's for everybody. That's right. And I'm showing folks how to invest with as little as a dollar a day or five dollars a day. I showed how if somebody put away five dollars a day by starting at 18, going all the way to 40, they would have on average in the stock market about $130,000 worth of wealth. And take that 40-year-old. Now he or she can teach their kids what to do. That's right. And... I know some folks are like, well, I can't afford this and I can't afford this. I can show you apps to where you can put in $5 a month and still have wealth. And whenever the situation changes, you can actually put more in. I'm showing folks how even though Amazon may be <coughs> excuse me, $1,800 a share, I'm showing, some, I'm showing people how to get into the game for just $5. Or they'll have a little partial share, but yeah. I'm showing them how to get Amazon, how to get Google, how to get Nike, how to get all of those things that people have been doing since 1871. And I tell folks that on average, you can get 9% on your investment. No bank is going to give you that. You might no. get a couple of pennies a month in a bank. No. And then the last session is free money in the workplace and the importance of life insurance, wills, and estates. I got a lot of people that came to me uh, after the session saying, if, if there's a way that we can get away from GoFundMe pages and frisk fries to take care of our mm-hmm. loved ones, Preach then doc. what can Preach we doc. do? Preach right. doc. And, these, and these were folks of color that look just like you and I. <clears throat> so we had some wonderful folks that came in and they showed people that were working or retiring or about to re- retire how to invest their money. And uh, one of my lovely guests um, – can I go ahead and mention her name? She works for us, but she's... Yes, sir. Okay. Her name is Lee Rankin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She does a wonderful job talking about the importance of having a wheel, and she had these 10 items at my session, and item number six was the one that got a lot of women's attention in my sessions where they were talking about, wait a minute, you can you, you can do what again to your spouse? I was like, wait a minute. So <laughs> oh, it, it, wait it, it was a session talking about how you could disinherit your spouse. And I was Ooh. like, oh, here we go. So I had to leave the room a little bit because I was like, it's about to get heavy in here. And these ladies are going to be like, well, you know, my husband got on my nerves last and, night. And so Dr. Ford to told me I could way. disinherit you. Oh, no. I'm like, like, oh, they like I drop left names. the room. <laughs> <laughs> I put my finger up like this and I was like, finger. I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let, let's put a pin right there, Dr. Ford. Sure. We're going to put a pin right there, uh, Mr. Chairman. We'll be right back here on the Chairman's Perspective, powered by the Kajuki Network. Chairman, 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 Chairman. The Chairman's Perspective on the Kajuki Network. The off-year electorate, the midterm electorates, are older, less diverse, more conservative. You have two electorates fighting for the future of this country. And what I'd say to your viewers and, and people listening in is, you know what? you got to stop that older, more, less diverse electorate from bunking around with your future. Funking up your airwaves and jamming the good information in your ear. Once again, it's Funky Politics. Funky Politics. We are back with the Cherished Perspective, and today we have Commissioner Edmund Ford, Jr., and he's been giving us a pretty good look into credit and financial literacy and what we have to do to get ahead of the game and to get in the game. That's right, to get in the game. In the game. Mm -hmm. Put us on the field, Coach. That's right. So what do you have to uh, say as as it relates to credit? I know you were were at a very uh, pivotal point you were making. Could you go ahead and wrap that thought up for us in fact um to to the listeners and the viewers during the break i was showing something on my instagram and uh, if anybody wants to actually see it my instagram is my first name e-d-m-u-n-d last name ford f-o-r-d junior and the one thing that i posted was if you think credit repair is expensive try buying something with bad credit wow Mm -hmm. but but think about it i mean you got a lot of predatory things now that um, still exists in some of our neighborhoods. Um, I asked us a group at uh, LeMoyne on College. I had a group of freshmen that I uh, talked to about credit. 
And I asked them, I said, do you know how much a, a percentage rate with a title loan place is? Mm-hmm. And they were like, no. I said, if you go back and look, they can charge you as much as 700%. Ooh. 700. Man. That's how it yeah. That's, that's, that's uh, it ought to be against the law, man. <laughs> It would have been well, against the law. You're the attorney. Law. <laughs> but you know what, though? It would have been against the law, yeah. but our fine General Assembly, which is a good segue right here. Right. Mr. Right. Chairman, I know you want to get into right. that piece. Our fine General Assembly back, I want to say it was about 15, 20 years ago, agreed to let these folks set up shop. But, I, but that's my, my I'm, I'm on a horse. Go ahead, Doc. Go ahead. So, so, Commissioner Ford. Yes, sir. There was a study mm-hmm. which was just released that indicated that the highest producing county. Mm hmm. In this state, mm. is Shelby County. Mm-hmm. In other words, we produce the most money for the state of Tennessee. I could have told you that. Right mm. here in Shelby County. Yet, it always seems that we are priority 99 mm-hmm. instead of priority number one mm. when it comes to the assembly. What's your take on it? Well, I know that whether it's a state rep or whether it's a state senator, they have to go back and explain a lot of their votes to their respective constituencies, just like we have to do. Right. If you go into 38125, they're going to ask you, why did you vote this way, this way, right. and this way? And if I go back to 38109 or 38116, and one thing that I do, I self-report on myself. There were several unpopular but correct things I had to do on the city council. Mm-hmm. And it was always around an election year. Right. But I went and told them myself. Right. And I got elected back in but as far as memphis is concerned i i think uh that we bring in about 17 percent of the revenue is that what the study said i think that's right give or take so it really hasn't changed but i know that our state reps and our state senators are doing the best that they can in order to um find find out what our needs are and try to articulate them up there now you do have a super majority of republicans and it's uh, a little bit difficult to get things done. But, you know, um, you got to keep doing it. You can't give up. You can't give up. Horse trade. Got to do yeah. some horse trade. Well, well, you just got to get it done. You get it. <laughs> You're listening to the chairman's perspective right here on the Kazuki Network. Well, the horse, that's an old term. Yeah. You, yeah. Commissioner Ford, there, yes, there's sir. one thing I want to make sure we get out, and we want our listeners to know this. Memphis, and, and the chairman and I have been talking about, Memphis is on the upswing. We got Memphis and Mady's coming around. We've we got uh, Union Gro- Union Row that looks great. We've got all of these wonderful things that are happening in our city, but still, we still have some of them. Uh, we have the worst opinion about where we live than I think some others do. What is that? Look, uh, former coach of University of Memphis, John Calipari, said this in an interview. Uh oh. And he said, "You're going to have some people that are going to want to kick their cat." And he said, if they want to kick their cat, let them kick their cat. Mm. But let the good things still come into fruition. Just like uh, t- tomorrow, I'll be at Cornelia Crenshaw Library helping mm-hmm. folks who want their credit score to go up. Or if they're tired of renting, they will be And this possible. is all yes. free of and charge. And this is all free of charge, yeah. Not it's that $99 a month and then. No, uh, no. <clears throat> and, 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 you know, there are some agencies that pay. And do an okay job, but sure. I'm telling folks, look, if you got somebody that's reputable, that's fine. But if you can spend three hours with me tomorrow, I'll show you all the rules to the game. And that's why I call my 90 day curriculum teaching the rules to the game, the 90 day curriculum, the financial literacy. But I think if we articulate more the things that are great, I mean, we have a great county commission. Yeah. And I've been one that's been very vocal saying that, look, if you mess with one of us, you're messing with all yes, of sir. us. That's right. And regardless of what philosophical differences we have, I mean, the good is going to win at the end of the day each each and every single time. That's so I think if we keep on preaching that, I think if those people that are still kicking their cat want to kick their cat, they'll be by themselves. They may have a group of folks, even if it's a big old uh, Facebook group. I'm not even going to mention that group. No. But, you know, at the end of the day, if that's all they can do is get behind a computer, they're not able to articulate solutions when it's time for them to run for office and do other things. I, like right. I said, I ain't going to mention names on this podcast. But we that's hate. the difference between a Van Turner who's out there doing the things. I mean, he walks the walk. It's like I'll take what uh, Anthony Anderson said in Hustle and Flow. He said, look, you got those that talk to talk and those that walk to walk. But you're not really looking at the folks who are talking to talk because they're too busy doing what? Yeah. Walking. That's right. That's right. That's right. Chairman. 
So, so uh, Commissioner Ford. Yes, sir. Uh, as as my as DC indicated, this is a very festive time it in is. Memphis and Shelby yeah. County. Africa in April mm-hmm. uh, yes, just sir. happened. Sure. Of course, we're now in Memphis. Do a good May. job. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything in particular occurring in Whitehaven you want the listeners to know? Any festivals, events, anything that we can look forward to uh, this summer uh, with respect to Whitehaven? There are a lot of things. I mean, <laughs> we're going to run out of time. But um, <laughs> I put it this way. Um, you guys got a new park down there. Yes, you got a brand new we park. We have a brand new park. Blue Cross Blue um, Field, yeah. $5.6 million was put in, yes. By Blue Cross Blue yes. I mean, I'm not plugging mm-hmm. Blue Cross Blue Shield, but right. yeah. they did the work. Right. They have done the work, and uh, we're working with uh, many uh, nonprofit organizations to get more things uh, for the 38109 and 38116 uh, community. In fact, one of the things that I've pledged to the neighborhood, and I sincerely hope that we don't have to do too much finagling in this budget that's coming up, but Mm -hmm. one thing that I did pledge to those neighborhoods was making sure that Sky cop cameras were Mm -hmm. put in the neighborhoods. I mean, if you go down Poplar Avenue, Mm -hmm. if you go down Yates, if you go down Walnut Grove, every other street, especially at night, what are you seeing? Blue the blue light. light. So we yep. got several taxpayers in many other parts of the city. Mm-hmm. Why can't they have the same thing that everybody mm-hmm. else has? And that's one thing that I know that uh, many of the council members that I'm working with, as well as myself, we're going to make that a reality instead of uh, a talking point. Wow. It goes back to the walking and walking, not talking. Not talk. talking. Absolutely. One other thing before we get out of here, because I know, I know you, you're a huge T, and I want to make sure people know that the real T issue mm-hmm. is minute, east of the Mississippi. Say? It's mm-hmm. east of the Mississippi. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Doc Ward and his folks know the T issue is Texas southern west of the bit, but Tennessee State University just was uh, highlighted. AOB was, uh, which is the what's the, the aristocrat band. of bands. Aristocrat of bands. Yes. Was just highlighted with NFL draft. The basketball team. They got a penny up there also, by the way. They do. What they look like for the OVC this year? They did okay this year. Yeah. We saw them come to Memphis and they yeah. played the other penny. Yeah. Uh, give them a little time. I used to go to all the games when I was at Tennessee State. I used to sit right in the front with a couple of my cousins when we played Fisk. That used to be the big game. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when uh, Robert Covington used to play as well, and now he's in the NBA. That's right. And I love it when they uh, announce the team and they say, uh, at forward from Tennessee State. I'm like, it, it just does something to Pride. you, you know. Just If anybody watched the draft uh, last night, I think the number 23 pick was a gentleman from Alabama State. Yeah. Wow. Look at yeah. God. And, and, and you know the one thing, and I asked my wife this, I was like, um, they didn't show any highlights. I was like, wait a minute, they're showing all the Alabama highlights oh, and yeah. the Clemson highlights yeah, and Ohio right, State. I said, yeah. come on, show at least the um, the game that's in Birmingham, the Magic City Classic. That's right, that's they right. went to a commercial. I was like, man. What? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Well, this has been great. And, of course, you're listening to the Chairman's Perspective. This has been a wonderful show with uh, Commissioner Ford. And we are on the Kazookian Network, and we'll be right back. The Chairman's Perspective Podcast on the Kazookian Network. Hey, I'm your host, Cynthia Daniels. And I'm your co-host, Williams Brack. And Grindset takes a deep dive into the mentality of the entrepreneur in Memphis. This show unpacks the entrepreneurial journey. What's your Grindset? So make sure to check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Tune in or your favorite podcast provider. Grind set on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian. Hey, Mr. Chairman, let me tell you something. Dr. Ford left us number one in stitches, but he left us with some information. Uh, one thing I think that keeps the people down is what we call low information, right? That's right. And so when the city says that they're going to do this, and I think we were just talking about on air, off air a minute ago about how it's breathtaking to say that I'm going to appoint somebody to help our citizens with financial literacy. What do you think about it? I mean, that's that's kind of, that's deep. I haven't heard that one before, have you? I mean, absolutely. We talked about credit. We talked about investing in stock. We talked about uh, basically just having good uh, financial literacy and health. Yeah, that's and, right. and that's just so critical. And that's what the man does outside of being a commissioner. Wow. <laughs> so he does that in addition to being commissioner for the highest voting uh, community in this county, which is Whitehaven, Whitehaven Westwood, Walker Homes, Western Park, Boxtown, yes, 
Twinkle Town. Twinkle Town. Bluebird Estates. He got it all that he got it Lord, all. I wish I could stay in Bluebird Estates. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, you got this thing, sir. You got it. So we are glad that you were able to chime in with us today. And again, we are on the Chairman's Perspective, powered by the Kazookian Network, and we will see you the next time. The Chairman's Perspective Podcast. Executive Producer, Shelby County Commission's Van Turner. Hosted by Chairman Van Turner Jr. and Daryl D.C. Catron. Recorded at Kazookian Studios. Directed, produced, and distributed by Kazookian.